you know, so I don't even like all expats for the most part. Like I find a lot of them extremely annoying, completely <laughs> naive. Uh, but you get a lot of expats who like stay in their little Western ghettos, right? They kind yep. of go to the same Western Absolutely. bars. You know, they never really learn the language, which is, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to judge anybody. They can do whatever they want, right. but I know that one, I don't really find those people enjoyable to spend time with because mm. it's, I mean, I could have just stayed home and yeah. met those sorts of people. Right. Like uh, I have actually a good Korean friend, right? He's from Gangnam, um, which is like from the song. It's like the Beverly Hills of Korea, right? Very rich. He works for a um, media distribution um, company. Very well off. Very affluent. But when he comes to Vietnam, he's like, yo, Sean, we're not hanging out with any Koreans, right? Unless they're my personal friend, right? Them Koreans here, they cheap. They just like stay in their little bubble. They don't want to integrate at all. And so I'm like, all right, cool. You, you might, you my type of dude. All right, we'll go out. And uh, before we start, man, what's, uh, what's new, man? I haven't talked in a, in a week or two. Bye, a lot. A lot. Uh... Right, share, share, man. Let me know, man. Juicy. I mean, I, I, I broke up with my girlfriend yesterday. Oh, man. Okay. Who broke up yeah. with who, though? It's actually, like, I normally just let girls break up with me. That's kind of how I get rid of relationships. Is I just, you know, I, I know what it will take to get a girl to leave me usually. Uh, but in this case, I just wanted to kind of shoot the kitten, shoot the puppy, so to speak. So take it back to the uh, backyard. Oh, yellow, right? Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> you just got to end shit. Um, it, it's not and, you, it's me, baby, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it, that's, there's truth to that, though, you know, like, obviously, like, there's always like little things that you dislike, but at the end of the day, it's, it's your willingness to, to change or tolerate or, or whatnot. And, it just, I, the issue is I'm just kind of like a single heart sort of person. Right. Um, and I was kind of framing it as between like this choice between like, do I continue to be single? I, I would really like to have children. Oh, okay. So it was like, I was kind of framing it as like, but, but what I was doing is I was kind of framing it as like children is like this package deal where like I have to get married and have this domestic life to have kids, which isn't necessarily true. Um, so I was kind of framing it as like, which do I want to regret more? Like uh, losing my freedom or not having kids. And I think, I mean, that's a tough choice, right? Like either one of those choices. I mean, you kind of want both of those. You want freedom and kids. You don't want to go with either one of those. Why not both? But I'm, like, I'm, you know, I'm, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just uh, complimenting you. I'm not asking you the question. Didn't have anything to do with the girl. Great girl. Uh, but, you know, I had to break up with her sooner rather than later because I didn't want to, you know, waste her time, waste my time. Which sucks, you know, like we were talking about getting married too. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I just... Oh, man. I'm so sorry, man. It's all good. It's all good. It's for the best. Like, obviously, like, I didn't want to break up and still be together. No, but I feel like huge relief after I did it, though. I'm uh, just kind of like a weight lifted off my shoulders. I'm really excited. Uh, summer's getting ready to start. I have one more day of class. Yeah. Uh, one more day of school. School yeah. class. And then I'm, I'm good for the summer and I can work on stuff like this podcast and other stuff. Beautiful, man. More content. Yeah. And then I just found out. Did you see that little video I sent you with the, the Gibbs versus time? Yeah, dude. It's funny, man. Like, why did, why did you choose, like, some vodka drinking AK wheeling voice for? That was very interesting. Uh, you can call me Victor now and you'll be in Nicola. Nikolai, uh, it was just one of the presets on Canada, more or less. Like, it wasn't like I, it was like a, like a police officer sounding guy. And I thought like the Borat sounding dude was a lot funnier. Oh. Especially kind of the way that I talk about, like, because my whole thing, whenever I give guys advice, how the fuck can you be so dumb? It's kind of common sense, right? Uh, like, you don't yeah, go, go into that a little bit more. What you, what, what's so dumb? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch that. I mean, basically, like, guys complaining about women being uh, sugar mamas and wanting money from them. Like, just don't give them money. It's very simple. Like, especially uh, uh, yeah, 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 no. So I think if you've been dating for like four years and the girl's yeah. like, hey, I need this money for this one thing. Okay, whatever. That's one thing. Like, two weeks, two months into a relationship, there's no reason why you should be giving a woman money for anything. Uh, and if you do, just know that, like I said in that video, like the request and the expectation for resources is never going to go down. It's always going to go up. So, <laughs> oh, I think I catch this one. Which video was this? Uh, I just said, like, I made two videos, I only sent you one. But basically, okay. just it's like, guys are complaining about women being like uh, gold diggers. And it's, it's like, well, if you set up that expectation, if you're using money to try to get sex, right. then of course women are going to use sex to try to get money from you. Mm. Very fucking simple. Like, right. you set the precedent, you set that expectation, and now you're complaining that women are just following along with the, the precedent that you set. Right. So the whole point of the video was like, okay, the, the expectation that women have for resources is always going to go up over time. It's never mm. going to go down over time. So you need to start as close to zero as possible and keep it at zero for as long as possible. Right. Like, start your relationship by being the provider, for God's sakes. You're just always going to be expected to get more. Cool. Uh, and there's more to it than that, but that was kind of the gist of it. And it was just this short video I made for these guys in the Facebook group complaining about uh, gold diggers in Vietnam. Oh. And, and my, you know, my demeanor on it is like, you know, this is very common sense. Right. Can I, can, can I say, uh, interrupt you real quick? Um, yeah. I got, I got this uh, insight from Psych Hacks. Uh, have you heard of him? Uh, Psychology Hacks. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that guy, yeah. So he mentions that because it, it, this relates to what you said. Um, the natural um, relationship between men and women is always going to be transactional, not in a specifically sugar daddy way where you're exchanging money 
but uh, resources, what he says is like time, attention, that sort of thing. And so you're right, like if, if you, if you're at you as a man, not you personally, but uh, you as any man, all you can give is just that monetary, you know, cash or credit card, then that's all you have to offer and that's it, you know? Yeah, and so yeah, I, think yeah. it's, it's good, it's, I think it's good to like be frugal with that, any kind of resources, whether it be time, attention, money. And so, yeah, I think guys, mostly men, I mean, like we were young, right? We didn't know all the stuff we know now. So I, I, I don't blame young kids, you know, because I made the mistake too. I think we all did. And so it's good to, you know, just pass that wisdom down to younger men. So go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was lucky. I was like really broke when I was younger. Yeah. So I didn't really have that opportunity to be, like, I didn't, I never had the opportunity to try to use these things to get women. In terms of like what women want, you know, if, if you can just give them fun, you know, good yeah, time and fun. Exactly. There's so, I mean, most guys she deals with on a daily basis are like weird and nervous right. and just not fun to hang out with. So of course she's going to demand something else. You know, if he's not fun, then I might as well get a free dinner. Not, not socially aligned, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, but if you can just, you know, be a source of good, good feelings for a woman, then that's usually enough. And yeah. obviously like the, there's no like universal one size fits all women. Generally speaking, as women get older, they want a little bit more resources. specific. Kind of, they're not as swept away by feelings. Yeah. Uh, but younger women, yeah, they just, they just want a good time. Super simple. Yeah. Um, and obviously they want to, they want a good time and they want to look cool. Right. So if you, if you don't even have to like make her look cool, as long as you don't make her not, as long as you don't make her look bad. The second you make her look bad, she's, that's no more. Yeah. So as long as you just avoid doing that and have a good time, she could, you could be a secret. Like she, she doesn't have to tell her friends. Nobody has to know about you. Yeah. Like, don't out out. That's what it don't, like, yeah, I, I never try to enter a woman's life. Like, I'm not trying to meet her friends. Mm. I'm not trying to get involved in her life. She's coming into my life. And it's like this, you know, this exciting new world yeah. rather than me going into her life and, and like trying to fit in with her friends, you know, which is just a terrible idea. Um, but yeah, just, just being a source of good times, being a source of fun, a source of excitement. If you're older, like a source of knowledge, of wisdom, uh, worldly experience. I saw this kid the other day and it was like, uh, sugar father, so mm. sugar dad. So instead of like, instead of giving like resources, you give like a strong parental foundation. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 And you can tell, but you know, obviously like, Women like that, but they're not really, they're not like really able to listen. Like they're, yeah. they hear it and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's really cool. You're not going to change their lives mm. um, for the most part. I mean, it's, it's more to make you feel good mm. than it is to like actually benefit the woman. If you're like lecturing her about the importance of like compound interest or something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, women just want to have a good time for the most part. And I mean, the dating scene is so fucked up in a way. Like you kind of got to pick your strategy, right? You can either be like the nice, comfortable dude that a girl settles down with, or you could be the fun dude that she has a fling with. Um, and you just got to pick which one you're going to go with and, and run with it. Uh, it's always better to start as the fun boy as opposed to the boyfriend divider. Because you, know? you can always you can always transfer. You can start as like the fun guy and, and switch that into becoming, becoming the boyfriend. Yeah. Much more difficult to go from the boyfriend. Reduce your commitment and just become the fun guy. It's, I mean, yeah. it's possible to do that. You're never, never going to be able to do that. But you'll always be able to go from like fun boy to, okay, now I'm more comfortable, nice guy, boyfriend. Usually, usually. As long as you have like other tangible stuff to you. You're like a total fun loser. Yeah, like you're just there. Right? But... No, yeah, so yeah, I absolutely agree. The, another point is like those two sides of the man, which is like the provider versus the alpha fuck boy or whatever they're they're inher inherently like uh opposite of each other so you can't be transient and be somewhere in between you gotta be one of oh, them yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? that's, at least that's, that's what i believe but like, no, like you were saying like uh, even if you have the money like you're providing resources with your time you're providing like planning which is like getting ready for an experience that gives the gets the girls you know uh panties whatever right yeah and so uh, yeah it's it's, it's uh, yeah, i always think of it as that way you know whether you're trading time uh planning uh, attention or you know what the normal definition of resources uh, is money and credit right that's a uh, that's how you, it's how you kind of uh, cut up the pie, so to speak. But, uh, hey man, real quick, man, this is really weird. Like, today we both on, have on hats that we didn't have before. You got on all black, I got on all white. It's like a nice little yin yang, you know, cat point, cat, counterpoint, counterpoint. Even all headphones match. So, you know, it's like, yeah, go. something's going on, right? <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, you look good, man. Are you ready for the summer? What's your plans? What's your plans for the summer? The summer, man, just, man, I'm just, I'm just grinding, dude. I like, I'm, I'm addicted to work now. I'm addicted to like this, uh, this business I got. But uh, no, no, like I don't have any plans to travel or anything that's like normal, that sort, you know. If it happens, it happens, you know. But uh, I'm not, I'm not into the experiences like as those other women we, we were talking about a minute ago. You know? Yeah, I think as a gilder, like you know, you've been there, done that. Like yep. it's not like it's high or ball. You know, these places are all yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, honestly, honestly, like when, when I go out, it's like after the third day, it's like okay, everything was good. Four star resorts, nice food, like scenery. And then to be honest with you, after the third, fourth day, I'm like I'm tired. I'm like I gotta get, a, I gotta, I gotta get a vacation on my vacation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just my, that's, that's just my train of thought. I feel you. I feel you. How are you doing with your podcast? Let's, let's get back in the conversation. Like, tell me about your podcast. Where are you at with it? What are you doing with it? What's the plan? Okay, so uh, I have another podcast that I started uh, with a buddy of mine. Um, his name is Huey. Um, we started about like four months, four weeks ago. It was just like my idea because like me and him, we would just go to the cafe and talk for hours. Like one time we did like a four hour session straight, you know, with like no bathroom breaks. It's like I was, I'm like, oh man, imagine that, right? And so you know, we I got I got him into cigar smoking. So we're just like puffing on some Cubans, some uh, Dominican. And we just like uh, smoke and talk it out. And it's like, damn, this is very therapeutic in, in, in kind of a manly masculine way because yeah, we talk about some gossip, but tiny, but you know, I just appreciated going into mm, the details and the deep thoughts of each subject. So I thought, shoot, we're like, what if, I, what if we just recorded this, right? So I, it's a good way to like hear it again from a third person point of view, right? So you're not there. And so, yeah, that's how we started it. Um, like I said, we mainly talk about things on Vietnamese newspaper. Wh
I think I'm even in your event. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> that's weird. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> I was just talking. I was like, meow. Uh, maybe the pussy cat is calling me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So the podcast is uh, it's, uh, it's been growing. Like I, I, I don't care. Like I, I don't want it to be quote unquote famous. I'm just doing it for my sake. Um, uh, but you know, the more time I, I do the editing, the more time I'm cutting it up, the more time I'm making thumbnails. Like this is like the first time I've done these sorts of things, and so it's like a good, you know, skill course really, right? And then I can gain a lot of insights and do a lot of uh, research and discovery, and so it's kind of uh, very beneficial to myself personally. Um, and then also my partner, my co-host, he's like he's lived here, so he knows more things about the culture and the the normal uh, day-to-day life, and so I learn a lot from him. You know, just uh, things like we were talking about the other day was like car here is like a status symbol even if you're broke they never want to sell the car just because they worry about how they're seeing uh, or perceived in the eyes of the neighbors and so th- those sort of things are like i think uh, very i think if i were here it, when i first came to vietnam in 2016 if i were here I, I wish i would have found some resource to learn about these things and so that's the that's the gist of our podcast it's called the unlisted podcast you can find it on youtube uh and then leave comments leave uh negative comments i don't care well, we we uh i always want to improve and uh, i always want to grow yeah i was gonna ask next uh, do you have any goals around your podcast or are you hoping to do it in the future but yeah, so like I said, like I don't have any expectation. I, I just use it as a means of uh, self improvement, um, getting to understand the culture more and more. And then, you know, this is uh, my lofty goal is just like, okay, the new generation, um, they've had, you know, the open internet for what's this, like 95. Um, they're getting a lot of uh, bad and good, you know, global news and global way of thinking internationally, right? And so, you know, I feel like there's a, there's a gap in, in like news because like news you only get like just the whole same one thing and on one topic it'd be like tops 15 minutes right then, then there's never any counterpoint or steel man or any deep conversations about it the pros and cons and so and it's just like uh i'm hopeful i guess like you call it goal my, my, my goal is like the new generation um can find a platform or means to have discourse and have lively discussions right in a deep and thoughtful manner and to understand each other more, more so than just criticize and just gossip and so i just i just hope like the people who are open-minded you know especially the young ones that know how to understand and understand the intricacies and the flows of the, of the English language, if they can get some benefit from it, then I'm more than thrilled. Yeah, I was gonna say, cause it, it, I mean, uh, the amount of Vietnamese people that would listen to an English language podcast, I imagine it's very small. But, it's small uh, cohort. but I wonder, I mean, there's, I mean, there has to be at least 30,000 expats, Western expats mm-hmm. in Vietnam, something like that, maybe give or take 10,000, 20 to 40,000 expats. So there's a pretty large, large demographic there. Um, I kind of wonder, like, I mean, what I find interesting is in a way we're all expats, right? Like temporarily speaking, we are so quickly, so quickly, so fast. Mm. Time wise, we're all expats. Like, because mm. I, I was thinking about there, there is no home for me to go back to, right? Because, like, the, the United States that I left does not exist anymore. I left 10 years ago. And the amount of change socially, culturally, technologically in that 10 years has been mm. huge. And it's only going to accelerate. Mm. So I, I find that very interesting, this notion that, like, we are, we're all expats in time, so to speak. But then you have, like, the actual physical expats of a place like Southeast Asia. Right. Not only are they living in another country, but they have no country to go back to. Yeah, uh, that, that home that they remember just simply isn't there. It's, it's changed and evolved into something else. Uh, and especially depending on where you're from. I imagine if you're from like Lithuania or something like that. Mm. Lithuania probably hasn't changed too much. Mm. But the United States, London, those sorts of places, like nine, nine day sort of shifts. Um, so I, I do find that interesting. I kind of wonder like if other people find, feel the same way and if there's like a kind of resonance with that sort of attitude. Uh, I imagine so in the expat community. I'm not really sure. Can you, can you go into a little bit more about your story? Because, um, you know, I think that'd be interesting to hear like if young Vietnamese people get a hold of this, they, they probably want to know, like, hey, like, I always get the comment, like, you're American, you have, you know, the golden goose card, why are you back in Vietnam, right? And I always get that question. So speak, you know, like you, you're more so of that, you know, like you come from the West, you grew up in America. So why, why do you want to make uh, Vietnam your temporary um, uh, permanent home at the moment? Well, I mean, I, I guess I'll say like what I've always said since I moved here is like, even though the, there's a lot of money in the US, there's sort of spiritual poverty. Um, mm. I think that's kind of apparent, apparent to most people who are familiar with the United States. Mm. Um, but I guess more specifically, like the thing that the thing that the U.S. lacks is like, for me at least, is a sense of adventure, right? A sense of like challenge in the unknown. Mm. And it's very difficult to, to find that in the U.S. I mean, I guess I could like wander off into the nature, uh, Appalachian Trail, Ozark, something like that. Mm. But other than that, like, it's like the sort of challenges you would face in the U.S., they're not good challenges. It's like, mm. okay, I'm going to walk down the street and encounter a bunch of homeless junkies mm. stepping over piles of shit right. and then uh, paying $6 for a cup of coffee. <laughs> that's, you know, that's just not a fun challenge. It's not like the sort of day-to-day what I went to encounter. Mm. Uh, so, so the notion of moving abroad, learning a new language, encountering new people, very much appealed to me, mm. and that's kind of why I came out. It was just more to the sense of adventure, the sense of unknown, the sense of challenge. And I think that's, I think I don't know if that resonates with a lot of people because a lot of people do want like the kind of comfort, you know, they want the status of comfort, uh, avoid, minimize pain, gravitate towards pleasure. Mm. So I think it takes a certain type of person to, to pick up and move abroad. I mean, there's really, you know, 
people get this kind of impression of Westerners from the expats that they meet. But the reality is like, it's a certain type of person mm. who moves from like Australia to the US to, to Mexico, something yep. like that. It's a very, it's like 5% of the population is even willing right. to consider that right. beyond just kind of like idle talking. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, you know, there's a certain type of person that will move abroad. You know, so I don't even like all expats for the most part. Like I find a lot of them extremely annoying, completely <laughs> naive. Uh, but you get a lot of expats who like stay in their little Western ghettos, right? They yep. go to the same Western Absolutely. bars. You know, they never really learn the language, which is, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to judge anybody. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. But I know that one, I don't really find those people enjoyable to spend time with because mm. it's, I mean, I could have just stayed home and yeah. met those sorts of people. Right. And it's just uh, not the sort of life I want. Like I, I didn't come here to, to eat fucking McDonald's, right? Mm. I, I, I can't drink craft beer, understand. right? Drink, yeah, drink. Uh, you know, there's good craft beer in, the, in, yeah. in Vietnam, but that's not why I'm here. It's not yeah. to have the American experience for 50% of the cost. Right. Um, yeah, I just, it boggles my mind people who come here and then eat at places like McDonald's or Popeyes and shit like that. Uh, but, you know, I, that's them. I, I tend to avoid that sort of crowd and kind of stay in my own little Vietnamese bubble, my own kind of small friend circle. Yeah, uh, real quick, like I have actually a good Korean friend, right? He's from Gangnam, um, which is like from the song, it's like the Beverly Hills of Korea, right? Very rich. He works for a um, media distribution um, company, very well off, very affluent. But when he comes to Vietnam, he's like, yo, Sean. We're not hanging out with any Koreans, right? Unless they're my personal friend, right? When Koreans here, they cheap. They just like stay in their little bubble. They don't want to integrate at all. And so I'm like, oh, cool. You, you might, you might have to do it. I will go out. And so we'll, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, like, uh, we, like minds think, uh, you know, great minds think, think a lot, think alike. And then I think he understands that too. Like, you know, when you come here to a new country, you're a guest. And as a guest, you know, you don't make the other people assimilate or, you know, go into your world, right? It's their world, right? Um, same thing with a lot of Vietnamese VQs of Vietnamese abroad now. A lot of them want to come here because they're stressed out, like you said, in the West. Uh, cost of living is like insane, inflation. Um, but when they come here, they want the best of both worlds. Yeah. Which is like, uh, kind of <laughs> not the point. It doesn't work that way. So they want the same salary, but with the same cheap follow, the same, you know, cheap transportation and cheap housing that you have here. And it doesn't work that way. Um, and they do business and they, they, they go about themselves in the same way as an American. And that's just not going to fly. And I had, I, you know, I know because I did it. You know, I thought, you know, the way, uh, American does things, like, uh, you know, we're kind of, Conceded that way, we like we think like everybody because they listen to our music, they watch our films, they use our social media platform that everybody's just gonna acquiesce to uh, the American style. But that's just not the case, and so I had to learn the hard way, and I I changed, you know. And so you know, if you who's these you know people to come here, it's like if not like not in, in a judgmental way, but I feel like if you're if you're not integrating in some sort of way, you're missing the most important part uh, of of the, of the country you're living in, right? You're missing out on so many experiences. You're boxing yourself into like what two three percent of the population here, and the other ninety seven you got no shot of the of. Um, interacting with unless they're trying to scam you they're trying to like you know get something from you so I, you know like open open your mind you know and try new things and then see how it goes you know and i, and I think uh, if you do that more than likely you'll find very good experiences right and if not like even if you get the bad one you learn from them it's a lesson yeah i would imagine like you know like as a white guy you kind of get away with it uh, acting like an american because people are like oh he's from america mm. but if if you're vq and you're trying to act like an american people probably forget you like you're yeah stupid yeah, yeah, because because actually now have like like a bad connotation to the name now. I noticed that. Oh really? Yeah, yeah definitely. What's the, what's the connotation? Uh, just like similar to like expats. You know, you come over okay. here. You're you kind of just like come into use the country, so to speak. You know, like here's just like uh, what's the word? The, the word in it, it means is guai. Guai means like it literally means like to turn and break things, right? So it means yeah, okay. yeah. Basically, you come in here, you, you do it your way. You're breaking chandeliers. You're breaking things to match your. Yeah, you're kind of like everything. Yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, like I, 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 when I, when I, I don't use I use that term that much anymore. You know, um. So I don't want to get coddled and like think that I'm above everyone else. And yeah, it's just uh, I think that's an Achilles heel of a lot of people that come here. But uh, you know, I digress. Nice. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another topic. Um. Oh, also, just speaking of topics, dude, like uh, have you, have you heard about the the Scott? This is um from the movie Her. Have you watched it? So H E R, yeah. So this is an old movie actually. It's over like ten years old. It connects to the current event in the in the way that um, this guy, uh, this is a uh, Hawking Phoenix, by the way, and he plays uh, the, the main character and he's lonely. He's he does, he's a misfit uh, in society and he only finds companionship uh, through a AI. Um, and the voice of the AI in the movie is uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Uh, so you just imagine how how cool that be if you Scarlett Johansson, but only the voice, right? Nothing else, nothing weird like sex bots or whatever. <laughs> but uh, well, the 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 news broke the other day that um, Open AI used a similar voice to Scarlett Johansson in the movie and now she's uh she's suing them uh because uh she feels like uh, they didn't ask for permission to use her voice but yeah I saw something about it so they is it so you can go onto open AI and they have some like voice you can select yep. and I'm assuming it doesn't say Scarlett Johansson it nope. says like Sky. Scarlett yeah. Sky okay yeah. yeah I mean you know people have voices that sound the same uh pff, yeah what are you gonna do uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know you can't stop somebody from sounding like you uh I understand where she's coming from. She wants her. She wants her back. You know, she wants her, her money. She doesn't want people <laughs> I to do like yeah. this. But uh, you know, somebody looks like you. 
as long as they're not misrepresenting that it is you, there's what, right. what is she going to do? I'm sure she can try to sue, but it sounds like it's going to go nowhere. Um, the lawsuit in, in court, by the way. Is it? Yeah, they, 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 they filed it up. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine that it will go anywhere. I would be mm -hmm. very shocked if, if the court is like, I mean, where does that end? Like, I could say anybody sounds like me. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like some of the, the AI tools, pretty pretty interesting. What's going on online? Like I said, that that voice changer that I just yeah, used, then, I thought yeah, that was really interesting because it. it sounds nothing like you. Like normally, like you kind of change the pitch and shit, like you pitch a little bit, uh, and and it sounds a little bit different, but it's still like the same kind of intonation that you use. Yeah. This is totally different, right? Mm -hmm. Like somehow they've able to like really make it a different voice. Yeah. Very very interesting. It's going to be neat to see where that goes in the next few years. Um, who knows? Who knows? So uh, they, the OpenAI actually they did uh, prove that prove that they use a voice actor. Um, uh, okay. And even the lawyer of that actor uh, confirmed all this. But the, the the smoking gun is like OpenAI tried to negotiate with Scarlett Johansson twice, right? So yeah. it's kind of like uh, I don't think for me at least there's there's no clear winner in this. I think if OpenAI would would have never like contact with Scarlett Johansson, I think they would I mean, be, it, they would be from a grounding. It's kind of like if, if I was making a movie and I was like, well, I need a Vietnamese person who speaks fluent English, yeah. and I tried to get you to be in my movie, and you said no, and I found a different Vietnamese guy who speaks perfect English. You couldn't be like, oh, well, they asked me first, so therefore I'm going to sue you because you found somebody else who fit this qualification. Now, I understand in this case, it was like they were specifically looking for somebody who sounds like her, mm -hmm. but, you know, what are you going to do? I, I mean, it seems to me like if, if AOC can, like, get past people making porn with her face on it, her literal fucking face. <laughs> like, but, you know, I think that's a, maybe deep, that's a different case, but keep going. Deep fake porn, then I'm sure Scarlett Johansson can deal with having a voice that sounds like her, but isn't her, being used in open AI's platform. Yeah, I was, like, uh, was going to show you here. Here are some examples of, uh, I know this sounds a bit racist, but, you know, white people sometimes look alike. You know, uh, what's the girl from, uh, um, what's the girl from, uh, what's that called, the uh, Joker? Uh, Lady Gaga. No, um, uh, Har Harley Quinn. Harley, Harley Quinn, yeah, that, like that, there's like four or five blondes that look like that, you know, and then. Yeah, yeah. Right, and so yeah, I think, it's, you know, people look alike. Yeah, like, what the heck, Harry Potter and whoever, but anyway, the point is like, uh, real quick and then we'll, we'll go to the next session. It's just like, you can hire a actor that looks alike and in the movie industry is no problem, but. Cool. Well, actually, I gotta meet somebody in like 20 minutes. Okay. So we might have to stop here and okay, then no uh, pick this up on Tuesday. All right. Sounds good. All right, man. Nice talking. Uh, I'll talk with you soon. Peace. All right. Bye bye.